for a down payment assistance. I apologize for coming in so late. We just got the application in Thursday, and I had to make sure it was eligible. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's funded through the home grant. Um, the need was $5,000 down payment assistance. It's actually one of the homes on the <coughs> our original last year's uh, rate of first refusal list. So it is reality transition as a seller. And it's on Ziegler Street. Yeah. But uh, the uh, the applicant meets all the guidelines, qualifications, and so it's pretty straightforward. Hey, Jeff, can we in the next couple of meetings get an update on what's going on with the water transition? Absolutely. We should be having, we meet with them every month with the status meeting, and we have another one coming up. So I'll, I'll get some um, documents that we can share with you as well, charts, all that. <coughs> I'm going to give you a full update. Appreciate it. Okay, number six is also one from Jeff. That's just for uh, your permission to apply for the TAP grant uh, transportation alternative program that goes through SEMCOG. Uh, they have $15 million of allocation, but uh, went to a workshop Friday. There's over 85 communities that are vying for that. Um, we're in a good position. We're looking to set up a, a bike and pedestrian network that would go from the City Hall District, Recreation Center, all the way up to the Shopping District, um, Southland Mall, possibly some sidewalks on one side of Superior. So Hennessy uh, Engineering is working in conjunction with us, putting together that proposal. Um, should be asking most uh, awards are between three hundred, four hundred thousand. So if we are fortunate enough to get it, that would be most likely the award we'd receive in that range. So they're going to share the fifteen million. Yeah. So it'll be distributed. So the grading is um, SEMCOG does the grading as well as MDOT. Uh, they both look at the applications and they use a scoring system. With our Eureka Streetscape around the, the retail area there, that really helps us with our what's called match because we have such a large investment that's already in play there, so that should help our application. So we're hopeful, uh, mm -hmm. and we're just going to apply and see what happens. Now, are these um, <coughs> the planning, are we looking at bike lanes on the roadway, or, or how, there, how Yeah, that? so there, there's some bike sharing more so, because it would, you could, to create a bike lane, you'd have, that'd be very expensive. You'd have to put all the infrastructure in. So we're looking at, there's already sidewalks from Goddard that leads into the Rose Garden subdivision, takes you through Heritage Park, that we then we would connect through Racco Road into the shopping district as well as the old Fletcher Park, or the old Fletcher site. So that's what we're looking to set up a network, and that's what SEMCOG is looking for. They want to see you set up a network for bikes and pedestrians. Now are you talking about like a network like sidewalks? Or how sidewalks is, is included, and in, in, in they also, um, subdivisions are called relaxed uh, paths. So uh, we'll share the proposal with you when we submit it. We're still in the works. Okay. So there's rendering and everything all drawn up? We're working on it. It's due on the 30th, okay. but they're not complete yet. So if we get this grant, we also would have to then have to accept the grant, correct? Right? You don't have to. It would come back right. under this body. No, I'm time. saying that it would come back. Okay. Yes. Now, the, um, I, I noticed that there's a fund match for this. Um, where, where's that money coming from? We're in a great position for fund match because of the Eureka Road project. Yeah. That's already investment that the city's making, so we're tying that into the proposal. So actually, that, that should strengthen our proposal, the match report. Okay. Yeah, we're already doing some of it. Let's yes. Help us finish it, please. Absolutely. So that, that's the match portion that puts us in a very good spot. Plus, we did the party road sidewalk, uh, which was over a hundred some thousand dollar investment as well. The ties in the superior, so that, that will all we'll all submit that all, all that together as match. Okay. Next one, number seven. Um, this is for Pfeiffer Investigations to do um, investigations. I guess wait for the police and fire, yes. primarily or only. Yes. Okay. Have you used this company before? Um, we have not. Um, this is our first time using them. Uh, we did a test uh, for three PSO applicants. Um, we found the process to be very uh, thorough. Uh, he was quick turnaround time, uh, answered all of our questions. I, Mr. Pfeiffer has come to Human Resources on many occasions for other communities mm -hmm. that he works with. So 
so I, I know the quality of um, you know what he's looking into for the backgrounds. Um, this is all they do, um, seven days a week, 24/7, um, and they're as you can see from the list of other communities that uh, you know their reference list or their client list. Uh, you can see that there is a, a multitude of other departments and uh, communities that use his services. But uh, we have found him to be extremely thorough, uh, very attention to detail, um, and really an, an asset uh, to the process. And I think what we're looking to do is to, um, you know, some of the investigations that were being handled internally through the Detective Bureau, looking to, to take that uh, you know, to lighten up that workload in the Detective Bureau and to have this performed through somebody who specializes in this and, and really uh, does this full time. So is that who you did it used before full time? That is, a detective that is correct. Okay. Um, so is this for, I'm sorry, is this for all employees? It is not for all employees it's at this time. It's just primarily going to be for police and fire. We used them at Romulus. Oh, okay. And uh, they were a very good fact. They called John Leacher down at Flat Rock. He was one of my patrolmen and eventually became a lieutenant of the detective bureau after I had retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spoke with him about Pfeiffer and, and he recommends him highly. So, uh, and having been in the detective bureau and done background investigations myself, I know uh, these people do a good job. So. Thanks, I, um, Initially, I'm just asking for the 7,500. Um, there, I may have to come back towards the end of the budget. I, I'm not sure, um, you know, with the candidate flow, what that's going to look like. But definitely, this will be built into the budgeting process for well, next year. Other expenses that's extra anyway, isn't there? Well, you know, if, if you look at the services that he provided, and, um, it's an a la carte kind of concept. Mm -hmm. And you know, the one thing is, is um, if he starts an investigation and, and there's some pertinent information that may change our employment decision. Uh, he actually you know, stays in, in good partnership with the Human Resources Office, and then that may shorten the amount of hours or the time. Um, and I know that uh, there's some other things in there, like the Social Security Administration test and some other things that are kind of priced up separately. Right. So. Uh, I, w I wanted to add what she was saying when I was speaking to John. He said that this guy will go out of his way. If he finds something that's not appropriate for our appointment, he'll come and advise you, you know, and tell you what, how he feels about this candidate and whether it's a go no go thing. So, other than, the, other than the, what you're going to get in black and white and paper from him, you're also going to get his advice too. So. I mean, just to reiterate, though, he is not putting any type of uh, pressure on the recommendation letters or anything together for the employment process. He's really just doing the fact finding and okay. gathering all those facts for us and kind of yep. putting it in a packet. Um, we as the employer obviously will make those findings. He did, like I said, yeah, I didn't mean to say that he would yeah, I, put in the report. Just if you have a question, he'll he'll come to you and, and just give you his best advice. Uh -huh. yeah. I just wanted to clarify the scope compliment. I didn't want um, them to think there was like a recommendation report that came no. with it. Okay, and Madam Chair, if I could, could I just throw my two cents sure. in? Um, I don't want anyone here to think that this is a reflection of the work of our detectives. They have been trained, they've been doing this for many years, and they are extremely thorough as well. Again, this is a way to uh, eliminate some of their workload from their other investigative duties, but I have full faith in my people as well as Mr. Pfeiffer, so I don't want this to be a reflection of my people. <laughs> okay. Take it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That never even entered my mind. I was just thinking they were overworked. Now you brought it up. What's that? Now you brought it up. <laughs> I understand. Okay, number eight. This is to approve the law office of Howard Schiffman to perform legal services related to risk management. Is this going to replace John Clark or just in addition? So, um, no, it's an additional firm that we'll be uh, looking to work with. Um, specifically Brandon Fournier, um, I don't know, uh, it, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to read the packet that I sent and to look at his experience, but mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple occasions to work um, with, with uh, Brandon. He's uh, heavily involved in the MML as well, but um, his background obviously is in municipal government um, as well as the whole risk management side, so he definitely has um, worked for the community, 
seen, um, you know, what as a municipality, what we deal with from the risk management aspect, but, you know, being an attorney, um, he brings all of that expertise and experience with him um, and, and can now put it to work to represent the city. How many lawyers do we have in risk management? Um, we have... Evaluated on and based on you know their expertise with the firm and, and what you know we think they can do with the, the case at hand. Um, I guess my question for this one would be, uh, what type of cases will Mr. Fournier be working on um, the risk management directly? Would they just be, you know as they're assigned to him or? <coughs> yeah, he has experience to to work on on all level of cases, but primarily it'll be um, police cases, the law enforcement, and then. Um, no, we we actually do not assign it to cases. Um, I think it's the administration that does that. Mm -hmm. 